Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my book review of the script, Star Trek Picard, No Man's Land, by Kirsten Beyer and Mike Johnson. This is a very different type of book compared to the traditional Star Trek Picard novels, because A, it is a script instead, so it reads like a like a movie script or a, an audio drama script, um, and also it is very short. It is 148 pages, whereas the books tend to be three to 400 pages. Um, so I uh, had been waiting for this book for a long time. Uh, they announced this book would be coming out as a audio drama that included the actual actresses who had played uh, Seven and Raffi, um, uh, that that audio drama would be coming out from Simon & Schuster Audio back in early 2022. And I was like, great, when's the, when's the script coming out? And they were like, oh, we don't, we don't have plans for a script. I was like, well, I'm not reading it then because I do scripts. That's what I do. I read the books. I do not listen to books. And so I had to wait. But they finally announced they were giving it a print version. So I purchased the print version, got it, and uh, read it. And in my uh, TBR video that I did for the month of September, I said that I would get this done in a day. And boy, was I correct because I got it done in a single sitting. I got it done in an hour and a half. That's how long it takes to read this book. Maybe two, two and a half hours if you're really slow. But I mean, I, I even think... I was going a little slow at times, so I think that uh, an hour and a half, two hours is about what it takes to read a book like this. And uh, just so for comparison's sake, I am not a huge Picard fan of seasons one and two. I did not like seasons one and two of the TV show at all. I thought that they just were, were not really uh, understanding the elements of Star Trek well, and I don't think that they were entertaining, which was the bigger problem for me, that they just weren't entertaining. I'm okay if you take challenges as long as I like them and enjoy them, and I just didn't. But Picard Season 3 is my favorite season of all Star Trek. Like, all Star Trek. It's my favorite season. I love it. I've rewatched it the most of any Star Trek season. I love it, love it, love it. Can't get enough of Star Picard Season 3. And please, Terry Metalis, uh, somehow find a way to convince... Uh, Paramount to make uh, Star Trek Legacy. Hashtag make Star Trek Legacy. Anyway, um, but I've been reading the books and I've read four of the five novels that have come out. We have Star Trek Picard, The Last Best Hope, which is, in my opinion, one of the best Star Trek standalone books ever. Now, the book is a prequel to the season one, and you would think that I wouldn't like it because of how much I dislike season one. This actually makes season one so much better because Una McCormick gives it so much depth. This is an amazing book. And then I also read the book Picard Rogue Elements, which I loved this. It's supposed to be just a fun adventure storyline, and it is, but it has some surprising heart and some really heartwarming moments in it. So I really loved this. This is by John Jackson Miller. Then we had Una McCormick's other Picard novel, uh, Second Self, which uh, I just didn't like this book. I, 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 I thought it was just okay. Um, I, I think that she really missed with this one. And, um, uh, uh, you know, she's dealt with characters. There's a character in this book who is a major part of, like, every other Una McCormick book. And I think that this is the worst that she's ever handled that character. Anyway. Then we had Picard Firewall, which I was very mixed on. I enjoyed elements of it and didn't enjoy ele other elements of it. Um, uh, but it tells like Seven of Nine when she joins the Fenris Rangers originally. And then there is a f another book I haven't read, which is The Dark Veil by James Swallow. Um, this one just haven't gotten to yet. But I intend to because I want to be able to have say, say I have read all of the Picard novels. But this is a, going back to the book, this is a uh, script it is a really short script. Um, uh, the basic premise of this book is that uh, uh, Raffi and uh, Seven of Nine are just chilling at home. And uh, Fenris Ranger shows up saying, hey, Seven, we need you to come back and um, uh, help us out with something. And Seven finally agrees. And uh, Ra she's like, hey, Raffi, you have good skills. You want to join us? And so Raffi joins along. And so they go to on the mission. The mission is to uh, protect the settlement, which is going to be attacked by this Romulan guy who uh, thinks he's the new Romulan emperor. If you know from Picard, uh, Romulus has been blown up uh, because of the sun and stuff, and uh, the people are all spread out across the galaxy, and this guy thinks he's the emperor, so he proclaims himself as such, and he's going to attack this settlement. And we, our main characters don't know why he's attacking, 
but for some reason he is. And so they decide to try to, the Fenris Rangers go to try to protect this settlement from this guy. And uh, Raffi and Seven are there along on the journey to try to protect the people. And there's a mystery behind it. And it's, you know, as I said, it's really short. It's basically a novella. You can read it in an hour and a half. And uh, it's so fun. It's such a fun book. There's a lot of funny characters. Some of the side characters I really liked. Um, uh, the character of Dietz all oh, was hilarious. I loved the character of Dietz. You also have the character of Hyro, who is normally this character would not work for me, but because of the humor of him mangling uh, human expressions and idioms was really fascinating and fun. Fun. It made his character interesting. Uh, not just the one-dimensional, we need you on the crew, I'm gruff, rah, rah, rah. Like, he actually was kind of funny. And then uh, you also had uh, the character of, uh, I forgot how to pronounce the name, Kal- Kaliva, I think is how you pronounce it. It's the, um, the, ca- the character who is, like, the second-in-command to the Romulan Emperor, quote-unquote Emperor. Um, she was kind of interesting uh, as second-in-command. And then you have uh, uh, Jillen, who is the, uh, Professor Jillen, who is the, scientist who's kind of gone crazy and insane and oh he was such an interesting character and I felt for that character oh my did I feel for Professor Jillen's character he had a great story in here so there were some parts of this I love just gonna say just so you understand I'm not a big fan of Rafi and Seven's relationship in the first place I didn't like it when they introduced it in seasons one and two didn't like it in this book but I'll you know, I know where it ends, so I'm actually quite happy where it ends. Um, uh, so uh, I liked where they took him in season three. And so uh, uh, this book, you know, I didn't particularly love having to read about the relationship, but it was told competently. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Kirsten Beyer, not only did she write a ton of Voyager novels, and so she understands the Voyager characters really well, but she also was a co-creator of the TV show Picard and was a writer on the first two seasons. I think her writing on the first two seasons is not great, but her writing uh, in the novels is always good. And I think this is the best Picard story that she's told that I've read. Um, I really, I really enjoyed uh, her part of this. And then Mike Johnson is a uh, comics writer uh, and has co co uh, co-written some comics with Kirsten in the past. That's why they teamed up for this, which don't know why you needed to team up for a, something that's so short. You know, you really don't need two authors for such a short story, but I don't know. I've seen authors co-write even shorter stories, which is crazy to me. Um, uh, the Talking about the price point, because I mentioned how short the book is. In today's economy, you have to be uh, have a valuable product. And uh, the valuable product really is about the price to, uh, uh, to like, return on value, return on investment. Uh, you can ex- you can price something really high, but you have to get a lot of out of that. And so the books, the novels in hardcover are like 30-ish dollars. And, you know, for a hardcover, that is, you know, a book that you'll read in four to eight hours. Yeah, that's a, that's a reasonable price. And the paperbacks of these same novels are about 18-ish novel or dollars, 17-ish dollars, which is, I think, also for a paperback, a fair price. This book is $15, so it's basically the price of a traditional paperback for Star for the Star Trek trade paperbacks. And you're getting an hour and a half, maybe two, out of the story. And it's it just in my opinion, just not worth the return on the investment if you're paying for something like this. Um, I said to be consistent and be fair. I said the exact same thing about the Star Wars manga. These manga are all priced at $15, and these also took me about an hour to read. These were even shorter. But, um, uh, and, and I enjoyed these stories, but you have to make it worth it when you have something like this. If this audio drama were two times the length and it cost the same amount of money, maybe we'd be in the ballpark of being worth the price. But as it was, it was not. If they had priced it like the mass market paperbacks that Star Trek used to do, (coughs) like, this is the style book. (coughs) Like, this is the style book that Star Trek used to do back in the day. This is a Star Wars one, for example, but uh, this is like the mass market paperback that they used to do. And this, uh, if they had done it like this and priced it at like eight bucks, nine bucks, I think this might've been worth it. But for 15 bucks, it's not really worth it. 
If you are a Raffian 7 fan, you'll probably enjoy this. If you're a big Star Trek Picard fan, you'll probably enjoy this. I don't know how many big Star Trek Picard fans there are. And then if you are just a big Star Trek reader and you try to read everything that comes out, you'll probably enjoy this. It's a fun story. And the mystery behind it is really good. I do enjoy the mystery and I do enjoy the twist that happens near the end. And the book has a very clean three-act structure. It is a very clean three-act structure. I really liked the way that these acts played out. I think it was really good. But... Um, uh, I, I still think that it's just not worth the return on investment. If it was like eight bucks, maybe, or if it was twice as long, maybe it'd be worth it. But for an hour and a half read, it's just not worth it. Um, uh, anyway, so that is my, those are my thoughts on Star Trek Picard, No Man's Land by Kirsten Beyer and Mike Johnson. Uh, if you've read this book or you listen to the audio drama, do you agree with me? Do you think it should be longer or be priced lower? Or do you think it's just right? Did you enjoy the book? That's more important for most readers. Did you just have fun with it? Did, what did you think of the twists in the book? What did you think about those minor characters? And did, did, did Professor, uh, Jillian touch your heart like he did for me. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.